there aren't really too many more ways I can picture where you can be mean to your friends and still get to call them friends at the end of the day. It is a virtual board game whereby players move virtual character tokens across a semi-randomly arranged game board, collecting the items and power necessary to become the next ruler of our mellow, while doing their darndest to prevent their opponents from doing the same. The premise is simple, the king of Armillo is stricken by an ancient evil and is dying, and so your goal is to either hasten his demise and take the throne for yourself, or position yourself so that your renown sees you crowned as the next king when he dies. Players roll dice to resolve challenges between both other players and the board itself, with the amount of dice available to you determined mainly by the type of challenge and your selected characters at specific attributes, which can be improved by selecting and completing a small number of quest challenges. While this might sound tedious and time-consuming to follow, the fact that it's a virtual board game means all the tedium of shuffling cards, calculating dice rolls, tabulating statistics and keeping track of rules, and turns is done by the computer so that players can focus more attention on the important task of, well, winning. The game itself is colorfully rendered in 3D isometric view with challenges moving into a 2D adversarial versus pain. Character tokens are fully animated in both 2D and 3D, with portraits similar in style to the best of mid-90s western anthropomorphic animation, and uniquely quirky to each character's personality. Armella's aesthetic is really what drew me in and is just so well put together that I can't really find any fault in it. Daytime is a feast of colors, especially with the Seasons DLC, which gives the board a random new look every game based upon, well, the seasons, and the muted purples of night remind players of the rot streaming under the surface and slipping through the cracks in the bright daytime the veneer. Fear the, night. the music is lovely. A fitting orchestral arrangement evolves from cheery to brooding to triumphant and more as situations dictate, but is always the right mood at the right time. If you're a lover of collecting tat, then Armello is a dream. Regardless of win or loss, completing games awards chests, which almost always contain a random style of dice skin from a collection du jour that occasionally changes. Aside from downloadable hero reskins, these dice are your means of customization within the game, and there are just tons of them, each with unique styles, effects, and even sounds. The game's mechanics and characters are all well thought out and varied. Being a virtual board game, it's able to seriously cut down on the tedium that comes with physical board games, while also implementing some mechanics, such as stealth, that are either impossible or clunky in a physical medium, and it does so with flashy lights and animations that you just don't get with little solid pawns. As with anything involving dice or cards, winning or losing can come down quite literally to the luck of the draw, and while good players will more often win by minimizing risk and making their own luck, I must mention that even exceptional games can, and will, end in defeat from one unlucky roll of the dice. The characters are each unique in their abilities and appearances, and there are enough of them to keep gameplay fresh over many play sessions. While the game ships with 8 characters, the paid DLC can bolster that number up to 20, each with unique styles and considerations of play. Playing with your friends in a private lobby even shares all of your accumulated DLC except for well, character reskins, which is nice, but even without them, the 8 basic heroes are different enough to remain enjoyable, and balanced enough to remain competitive even though several of the DLC characters are just objectively easier to play, but that tends to be the way it goes with the DLC, isn't it? Speaking of balance, the game is constantly updated, at least at this point, by the development team at League of Geeks as they prepare it for the version 2.0 update. While I'm not a fan of all the changes, and I will forever miss Gore, my beautiful broken baby boy. Edits to several cards and characters over the last year have resolved issues of certain characters and card combinations being absolutely overpowered and impossible to handle, and it just makes for a much more overall fair game than it used to be. 
Unfortunately, all the constant updates means that something somewhere eventually and frequently breaks. And in a worryingly high number of these cases, it breaks in a way that you know should have been obvious during any kind of normal QA testing. While problems do get resolved eventually, that eventually can take a ridiculously long time. Such as this one glitch in particular that handicapped players by making part of your hand of cards unplayable duds. Sure, it's fixed now, but it took months to resolve. For all that balancing as well, there are certain characters whose abilities are just objectively mediocre, situational, or worse, just boring. Here's looking at you, Mercurio. Compared to some other much more active, interesting, or outright useful abilities that will have a much more consistent and direct impact upon the game. The forced camera panning between turns can get rather annoying when you don't care about what's happening and are just trying to play your cards out of turn, especially when you're playing via a controller. Also, low-end computers can take quite some time to load the character's selection screen, during which the timer that counts down to the beginning of the match will continue and can put the players at a significant early and sometimes persistent disadvantage. Overall, Armello is a fantastic board game that marries itself with just the right amount of traditional role-playing elements to keep me hooked for a hundred games, and has enough lost evenings on the horizon for me for maybe a hundred more. Whether or not it's your jam, the aesthetic is superb, and I've had victory snatched from the jaws of defeat enough times to make every game tense and exciting as it nears the end, regardless of how secure any opponent's lead might seem. If you're a board game enthusiast, the basic $20 asking price will get you plenty of enjoyment, but I would wait for a sale to snag any extra DLC. If you can get everything on sale, grab it. Grab it for yourself, your friends, your family, your creepy neighbor Steve, and your cat, and your dog, and your rat, goldfish. Oh.